quickly neck. We have buried 15 souls. Several were relatively unknown to us, having moved away from the parish many years ago. Several who died were very precious to us, and we miss them greatly. We take comfort in the hope we share that those no longer here await reunion with us on a different shore and in a greater light. In the meantime, we receive solace from the promise of Scripture that love conquers death. It is fierce as the grave. Therefore, even as we wait, our connection with those loved and lost is not severed, yet the pain of grief cannot be entirely expunged. We have also endured together three major events in the life of our parish. Earlier this year, I was on extended medical leave, temporarily disabled by neurological issues with my back. I continue to struggle with this malady, but with increasing success, and I anticipate a day not far in the future when this specter of disabling pain will no longer haunt me. I am grateful for your prayers. They have brought healing to my body and peace to my mind. We've also experienced the departure of two fine priests, Maria Kane in August and Lauren McDonald in October. Maria left reluctantly out of academic necessity. Lauren followed God's call into the mission field. While we miss their presence, we still enjoy the blessings of their ministry among us, and we cherish the fond memories of our life together. The cumulative effect of all these changes on the parish is evident. There is a sense of fatigue and lingering hurt. Full healing will take a little more time. However, we can give thanks for how the Holy Spirit has moved through Hickory Neck, even during these distressing times. Our parish life team, in its most active year ever, acquitted itself nobly. They demonstrated the highest standards of hospitality in very challenging circumstances, never once flinching from their duty or sacrificing their core of excellence. Several hundred people have benefited from their tender mercy and exceptional elegance, and I thank you. Many other teams have been very active, and I am impressed that throughout this year of uncertainty and transition and pain, Hickory Neck has not faltered in its mission. We have persisted in caring for those in need, both within and beyond our congregation. Congratulations to every member of our pastoral care and outreach and newcomer teams. The practical needs of our buildings and grounds have been looked after scrupulously, thanks to a dedicated core of people that work tirelessly. Our gratitude goes to them. The buildings and grounds would literally be falling about our ears without them. The people of our parish, with the encouragement of our stewardship team, have shown remarkable generosity in supporting our mission with every resource at your disposal. Vestry has exercised wise leadership with prayerful care. Our worship remains robust due to the diligent efforts of scores of people who gently work behind the scenes Sunday after Sunday and worship event after event. The communication team has improved our website considerably and keeps Hickory Neck in the eyes of the public through local news outlets. And our staff has proven resilient and creative. Our children and youth team does vital work, as it always has done, at 9 o'clock when Sunday school exits during the processional hymn at the end, the congregation at worship is delightfully decimated. I sometimes think that that, uh, that end over there empties out so much that we're going to start to tilt one way <laughs> when they go out for Sunday school. And every Sunday night, uh, nearly a score of adolescents gather for fellowship where they learn the stories of scripture and engage in sincere prayer and praise. And tonight they'll be going down to Newport news where they will learn target practice at laser tag. For a year in which we have suffered so much, I think we rightly give thanks to God for how Jesus has inspired people to stay the course and make sacrifices. We have fought the good fight and pursued our call. Adversity tests people, and I believe Hickory Neck has passed the test of 2011 with flying colors. 
But our work is not done, nor will it be until Christ returns in glory. Looking forward to the future, we face both challenges and opportunities, and in many cases, they are one and the same. When a community deals with a series of hard blows like we have received over the past year, it can be easy to focus on survival and allow that to become a habit. Yet God calls us to more creative purposes, purposes that deserve tenacious commitment, and that core purpose is the spread of the gospel in word and deed. One area where I believe we need to focus greater energy is evangelism. And evangelism begins with prayer. I ask each person here present, along with those absent, to include in your daily prayers that the Holy Spirit may lead people to seek out Jesus at Hickory Neck. Church growth is a movement started and sustained by the Holy Spirit. If we pray with pureness of heart and with the right motive, we will experience the joy of welcoming new people into our fellowship. When I speak of right motive, what I mean is that our desire should not simply be to enlarge our numbers. This is a demonic motive for church growth. Our prayers ought to be oriented toward the good of those who currently lack a faith family. When our hearts resolve to bring others to Jesus for the right reasons, the Spirit will bear fruit through us. To enable the movement of the Spirit, we need to do a better job of inviting people into ministry where they can discern and share their particular spiritual gifts. This is a matter of personal introspection that can be catalyzed by small group conversation, like for your groups, and through individual efforts. As disciples, we need to discover how we have been blessed with abilities designed to fulfill God's purpose for our church. Here we find the true meaning of stewardship as we share the treasures with which God has endowed us. This will be hard work, but anything worthwhile involves some difficulty, and it is exciting. I am enthusiastic about 2012. Considering what we have been through in 2011 and how well our congregation has responded to its many troubles, I can only imagine what we might accomplish in a period of greater stability. I look forward to being present and active with you in a new way as the back malady that has plagued me for several years finally subsides in the new year. As we approach the 10th anniversary of my, my tenure as your rector, I feel the strength of our first years together marshalling once more. I am committed to cultivating the phenomenal leadership potential that exists in our parish. I am optimistic that as we have done twice before, we will find an associate rector of very high quality who can make an immediate impact on our shared ministry. I believe that we will bring more people to Jesus Christ, adding fresh gifts and energies to our parish and its mission. Whatever may happen in the year ahead, and I make few promises because it can be so unpredictable, I am confident, now more than ever, that Hickory Neck will overcome whatever challenges present themselves. We have gone through so much this year and done it with such great loving grace that it is hard for me to see how anyone could waver in the faith that God resides with this parish. Let us draw on that divine strength as we move forward, and may our prayers be answered and blessings pour out upon us so that our beacon of light and life and love may shine forth brighter than ever before. Thank you very much.